Yo, what's up guys, Felix from Giant Lifestyle. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm sitting down with a good friend of mine, Coach Sean Chalice. He's a real estate expert, has been in the real estate industry for over 25 years. In this video, he's gonna tell you guys how you can find real estate deals, 10 different ways you can find off-market deals. A lot of you guys on my channel are interested to get involved investing in real estate, so this is gonna be a good video if you wanna learn how to beat out your competition and find deals that nobody else is finding. Before we get into the video, be sure to check out my real estate book with one of my mentors, Nasser, aka the Real Estate Guru. Tell, talks about all ways about how to actually do real estate wholesaling, but Sean is gonna go into 10 different ways to actually find these deals that nobody else is looking at. So tell us, Sean, how awesome. are you gonna find these deals and then introduce yourself to everybody on my uh, channel, who you are, where you're from, and what you got going on today. So first of all, I appreciate you having me on your yeah. channel. Um, you know, I think what everybody talks about is like in the real estate business, I've been on the retail side of the real estate business, but for years, people talk to me about wholesaling deals and how do I find deals, how do I find off-market deals. And especially. So how do you find deals where the, the seller isn't getting beat up or isn't getting offers on top of offers, it's making and driving the price up. You want to get the property at the lowest possible price, obviously, in a wholesale deal. So one of the first ways that we do that is we're actually calling very specific targeted lists of people that, you know, we went, what we did is we decided, and we said, hey, at some point I looked at my real estate business and over the years, after 25 years, I've seen it go up and down, up and down. And when it was going down, all I kept saying is, how do I find people that have to sell their house or have to buy a house? And really what I did is I went backwards and said, okay, the first one is probate. Mm -hmm. And those people, you know, we, you know I, I see people all the time, they go, why do you do probate, Sean? And I'm like, well, listen, if the market is going straight up, they're putting nose candy in their nose, they're drinking and doing all kinds of things, killing themselves, so there's mm -hmm. deals. Yeah. If the market's going straight down, they're jumping out a window, so there's deals. So mm -hmm. ultimately, no matter which way the market is going, during probate, man, there's people doing deals. Um, so And then for the audience, and then by the way, I'm going to put his information on the channel, and I'm also going to put his uh, channel and other social media down in the description, but for people who don't know, that's no, for people probate. who right. pass away in the family and then the property right. gets so, left in their hairs. Right, so you a probate or an estate is typically somebody who's a third party or a third party in charge of a property. And the way they ended up in charge of that property is, let's say you and I were married and you passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, that property comes to me or my father and mother, my, my mom passes away this year and then next year my father passes away and I live in Texas and my parents are in Florida. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to take care of the house and it gets to me. I, if I'm out of state especially, I don't want to deal with it. I just want somebody to handle it and send me a check. Yeah. So how do you do that is, and that's a great opportunity and something to think about is, it's not just getting the house, but it's finding somebody who's motivated and in a situation where they don't want to deal with it. They just want to cut it loose. One of the other ways to do that um, is during divorce. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, people don't realize during a divorce, the money's in the house. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a probate, by the way. Usually there's not a lot of money floating around in an estate. You, th you, know, you see on TV where people have millions and billions of dollars in their estate. Yeah. You know, normal people don't have that. They yeah. have five, ten thousand dollars in the bank if they're lucky. Mm -hmm. The average American has less than two grand in the bank. Wow. So if you think about that, I'm gonna say that again. The average American has less than two grand in the bank. So if we're doing, if you're talking about their estate for Christ's sakes, there's not a lot there. Any money that is there is the equity in the house. Mm -hmm. So if I could say to Joe, hey, listen, Felix, I'm gonna get you the equity in your house in the next ten days. Would you be interested in that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, Great. How do I, who do I have to kill? Yeah. Right? So that's the other way. So probate and divorce. What's number three? Attorneys. Attorneys. And it doesn't have to be divorce attorney. But get like, one of the bigger attorneys that you'd want to talk to is, is bankruptcy attorneys. Mm -hmm. credit, credit guys who specialize in bankruptcy. Also in distressed properties. Um, also the, the um, what they call tenancy lawyers. Mm -hmm. Tenancy lawyers or, or land use and tenancy lawyers are lawyers that specialize in doing properties where... Let's say a guy has a 10-unit building and that building has violations on it mm -hmm. and he keeps getting violations and at some point he can't afford to pay the fines on the violations so he's got to sell the building. Mm -hmm. The guy who's going to know about it is the, attorney. is the attorney unless you know somebody else, which is guys like us, where we can actually show you how to get that secret list. So you would recommend uh, people watching this video build relationships with attorneys? You can. There's another way around that. I'm going to talk about that as the last one. Okay. Every one of these, you want to either find somebody that can get you access to it mm -hmm or find somebody who's an influencer in that space. I understand. The next thing you want to do is is you know like is what we call circle prospecting. Yeah. Which is usually and this is a this is like a trade secret that most people most realtors are trained to know, mm -hmm. but the general public doesn't know is is that every time I sell a house, 
usually two or three houses on that same street are going to sell. Mm. So, it, and, it, and really what it does is that when I sell my house for a hundred grand, yeah. you know, in the stock market, if I say to, hey, Joe, you know what, the stock the, the stock went up today at $3 a share, and you look at it, and you go, no, it went up $3.03. Yeah. It just went up another four cents. You could see it up to the minute. You could see that you could see that stock moving. It's a very efficient market in the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. In the for, in the in the real estate market, it's not efficient. So if I sell the house down the street, it takes a month or two for that information to travel from to become from the rumor to the news, mm -hmm. or for for that to actually become public knowledge that oh my God that guy sold because if I sell that house today, it doesn't close for sixty to ninety days in most cases. Mm -hmm. And that, that means that there's a lag in the market. And that lag is the opportunity for you. Let's say that house sold for 100 grand, but the house next door, the guy only thinks it's worth 60. Yeah. Because he's not aware of that house being sold already. Mm. So, so it's so like a you, trickle effect. It's, a, it's exactly right. But you want to get you want to get to that property before anybody knows how much that property is really worth. I got you. The next place is funeral directors, believe it or not. Wow. Um, when the funeral director, if you have a relationship with that guy, he's going to know, and he usually, in a lot of cases... He's a guy that doesn't get paid either until they sell the house because they don't have the money to put the guy in the grave. Yeah. So that's another way of doing it. The other one is... I seat. like that one. That, that, like, you know, out of all the ones you said, and I'm looking at the list while he's talking, yeah. you know, funeral directors, I feel like, you know, people might not think about that, but that could be a gold mine because people are dying every single day, especially, you know, some people die young, whatever the in tragic Morris, scenario in Morris County, be. New Jersey, it's 180 people a month. A month. So uh, even if <laughs> how many of those people, you know die there maybe it's, it's a one person household and then what's their what's their property so eventually the people who die that if you could have intercepted them before they were a probate you could have got them at the funeral home or what you can do is like people that i'm talking to now is i have uh targeted groups of people yeah that in this town yeah there happens to be 375 of them yeah that have a property that is this big but can support a house that's this big mm. they own a cash they're over 60 years old, they have no kids in the house, and they have 100% equity. Wow. So I know I have that targeted list yeah. for this, and I just call that list, and every every you know, every know month there's going to be two or three people that are going to pop up out of that list and say, yeah, I want to sell my house now. Mm. You know, and, and it, you know, the, the goal is to follow up with them consistently. Yeah. And that goes back to like the 10x personal success formula where you have to be disciplined enough to re follow up with the person every week or every yeah. month or every year, whatever that routine is. Yeah. Um, and we teach people that it's yeah. it's it's all about discipline and it's all about knowing the data. I got you. It used to be just blindly calling people and going crazy and you know calling them, you know. Now, I you know I, I mean, we talked about this before we got on, but I was in the military. I was a ranger yeah. in the army, so I was special forces. Yeah. Ten, you know, five guys can do the damage of 150 guys mm -hmm. if they're trained correctly and if they use the right intelligence and they use the right information. So my, my consulting company is RI Square Consulting, which is really intelligent information. Mm -hmm. It's taking old school tactics like mm -hmm. grinding on the phone yeah. and taking new school technology and AI, artificial intelligence, where, you know how to mass text people, how to call someone, how to leave a voicemail on your phone yeah. without the phone ringing, and putting those two together and finding the people so that now instead of making 100 phone calls, I make 10. Yeah. Those 10 people I know yeah. are my target audience. They're my yeah. perfect customer. Yeah. And by the way, if you know watching this video be sure to check out Sean's stuff because what you were showing me upstairs it's almost like you're just cherry picking these people That's exactly what we do we're only going after you know you know if you go when you watch people that be you talk about cherry picking if you talk like if you talk to people like like raise um I have friends of mine that buy shares in uh, grapes yeah that they you know they buy like they know like this grape this grape dealer or whatever that sell that makes wine out of yeah. it you know they they know and they, and they only pick certain grapes and there's like grapes that they only like they call it the first frost. Mm -hmm. So after the first frost, they only pick those grapes and they make a very special bottle of wine out of it. We do the same thing except mm -hmm. we're doing it with data, and each one of those audiences has a different a different criteria. Like I have a I have an audience where I happen to know that in this part of New Jersey is a place where Hudson County, where our friend Boris lives, like in Hoboken, in that market, right. In that market, the people that are moving, they usually move out to here, mm -hmm. right? So they're what they call feeder markets, right? Mm -hmm. They go back and forth. Well, what I did was I said, no, I don't want to deal with the dreads of society. Mm -hmm. I want to deal with I want to deal with the guys who are making a lot of money. So I basically, and, and now my company, RS Squared, we create lists for people to do the same thing where I said, hey, I only want to deal with somebody that makes over 500000 a year, has a W-2 mm -hmm. paycheck, and has an advanced degree and at least two kids in the house. And people wow. say, well, why do you want an advanced degree? Or why do you want a W-2 paycheck? Because I know that guy can get a mortgage. Yeah. And I know that that guy, if they have an advanced degree, 
they, they usually, which means that they're not some shylark, they're out there doing a legit business, they're usually a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, or something along that lines, as a professional, and when I'm calling them, you know, if, if you're making that kind of money, you're, you're not living in a shack. I got you. Right? So the, the other place that we're actually talking about is bird dogging, oh. where, you know, believe it or not, I used to have the guy, guys who were, who were on my payroll years ago, mm -hmm. the postman. He's the guy, if he sees like, if he sees like notices that, you yeah. know, you're getting defaulted on, yeah, he's the first guy to know it. Yeah, and then you'll so, get him back a little referral fee. That's exactly right, right? They, you know, we wouldn't give him money, but we might give him a gift or something like that mm -hmm. at Christmas time. We may give him a box of candy, you know, with something in it. Um, you know, like, but the, the mailman, the PSE and G guy, yeah. they hook up service and they turn service on and off. The electric, the electrician. Yeah. Um, all those companies that, any company that is, you know, I call it going upstream. Yeah, maintenance to the house. Maintenance to the house, the guy who puts in the solar panels, the guy who puts in, the guy who does the landscaping. Yeah. Like, you know, what do people usually do when they're getting a house ready for sale? Yeah. They start to clean it out. Yeah. They start, you when you start seeing stuff on the front lawn, mm -hmm. when you see the sign that says, my kid graduated from Villanova University. Yeah. Hi, hey, dude, I know your kid's graduated, congratulations. By the way, yeah. is it time to move yet? Yeah. Well, I've just waited for the last one to get out. That was it, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So. And you know, you, you, the, the best way, I know we've talked about this and you have a great system which is bandit signs. Yeah. And bandit signs are what I would call the, the first level of getting involved in getting properties to come to you. Yeah. And we talked about this briefly was attracting business versus grinding for business yeah. and aligning for it. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when somebody's calling you saying, hey, I want to sell my house, I saw, my son, I saw your sign, the it's an one, offensive phone call. Yeah, the level you're, 10 is higher. The level of intent, their motivation is higher, but it's also it's also that you know that person when they're calling you, they're calling you. Yeah. You have the goods. You yeah. know, you're you're the guy who's saying, hey, I got I got the ability to get your house sold. Yeah. And I could you know we could close on a house in ten days nowadays. I got you. Right. So what is the last the last piece of the puzzle is every one of those um, different things I've talked about. Mm -hmm. You either have to you either have to find out where it is. Mm -hmm. You have to get the resources to it. Or you have to get access to the people that know it. The easiest way to get rid of all that so that you're not dependent on somebody else mm -hmm. is to get the information and get the contact information for the people. So when when you know when somebody like we actually sell data to people, where I'll say to I'll sell to wholesalers. They'll say I focus like my students. The students that I train and I coach on probates and estates and the people that I train on doing, you know, uh, wholesales, mm -hmm. I basically go to them and say, and this, you know, obviously what Felix does too, is your, your, you know, your students and everything else, we can actually say, what town do you live in? And they say, okay, I live in Old Bridge, New Jersey. And I'll say, okay, do you want the whole town or you just want the whole county? Mm -hmm. I would suggest the whole county because when you're first starting out, you know, like Robert Kiyosaki, Rich, and, rich Dad, Poor Dad, he always said, when you're going to buy a property, buy the first property, don't buy it two hours away or three hours away, yeah. buy it right in your backyard so you can go see it. Mm -hmm. And buy it in an area where you would want to live. Mm -hmm. So if you said you live in, more, in Middlesex County, you more than likely, if I called you up and talked to you about a house on the other side of town, you probably know the town, you know the area, you could do it over the phone, you don't need yeah. to go see it. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the data that says, here's all the people that passed away this month. Yeah. Or here's all the people getting divorced this month. Or here's all the people that meet this criteria for the house that you're looking for. Or do you want a house with like a big phone call we get in this town is? I want a ranch. Yeah. Because my kids, I want to stay in town. I have a big house. I don't want stairs. I want a ranch. Mm -hmm. The problem is most builders will buy the ranch, tear it down, and build a big mega house. Yeah. So they're really hard to find. Unless you know a guy like us where yeah. we actually give you the list that says, instead of calling everybody in town or doing what I used to do is send the guy around on a car mm -hmm. and write down the addresses for every ranch in the, in the town. Yeah. And bring me back the list and then take that list and have somebody put a phone number to it. Yeah. We do all that for you. I got you. We so, basically give you the list that says, you're looking for a targeted audience, here is the list. I got you. So do you have any more on the list as far as different ways to find I mean, the, 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 I think I think that's more than enough for okay. the, the, I'll ask you a great question. One of my coaches asked me this one day and he said, he said, how many products does Apple really sell? Yeah. One. They sell a phone. Yeah. They sell the phone. And they, they, you know, if you look at the iPad, you look at the computer, you look at the PC, all their stuff is based on the phone. Yeah. So it's not, it's not all 10, it's pick one. Mm -hmm. Start with one, become an expert at it, become so good at it that nobody else can beat you at it. I got you. Right? And once you understand it, once you know it, and once you understand the objection handlers, 
So what's an objection handler, right? So I call you up and you know I call you up and I say, hey, you know, Joey, um, you know, I was calling you about your house. I noticed that it was a, a you know, I noticed your mom passed away, and I was wondering if you had any interest in selling the house. Yeah. And you're gonna say no. Yeah. No, and he says he says no. You know, I'm not really ready for that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I can appreciate that you're not ready for that now, but if you were to sell it, when do you think that would be? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, see, most people don't realize that most people that are gonna watch this say that the wholesale business doesn't work, or the mm -hmm. telephone prospecting doesn't work. And the reason why is because you've gone shopping for a suit, right? Yeah. And you walk in the store, what's the first thing that happens when you walk into the store? They're trying to sell you, basically. You walk in and I walk over and I go, hey, can I help you? Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 I'm good. Yeah. So how many no's did you tell the guy before? Yeah, yeah. But on the way out of the store, right, what, how many suit, you walk out with a suit, a pair of pants, a belt, two yeah. shirts, a tie, Yeah. right? And the guy, and you just told the guy, no, I'm not interested. Yeah. Right? So it's getting past the reactionary now. I got you. Can you, just so we don't make this video too long, yeah. can you um, tell everybody maybe some closing thoughts and then where they can find you online? So I think the, I think one is decide what is the easiest thing that's going to fit your um, business model. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing it part time, you maybe want to focus on just one area, of it, one area that nobody else is doing, or mm -hmm. something you may have a knowledge about. Yeah. Something you already know about is usually better. Okay. The second thing is is how to find us. You can go to our channel where I coach Sean Chalice. Okay. It's, um, and just go to our channel, and then you know we have some stuff there, and we have we do offer some coaching for people. We also have some products um, that they can look at and they can get more information about. All right, cool. So there you go. That's Coach Sean Shallis, real estate expert. He's also an author. I'll put his information in the description and also on the video. And thank you for joining me on this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Got it.